Chairman, and I welcome Mr. Fraser and all the witnesses here today. And I just start, just established there again. I'm going to start on vote one. The President's establishment of appropriation accounts, <coughs> and I see 3.7 million, uh, 2.6 million under different headings, and then 5 million. So that comes to a total of 11.3 million of costs in total for the presidential establishment. In my reckoning, am I right there? Under different headings. <clears throat> 3.7 million financial total gross expenditure, and then we come to the next page, uh, 2.6 uh, uh, allied service expenditure as well, and then 5 million was mentioned there for maintenance and other works. So we're talking about a total of 11.3 million. Am I right there? Am I checking uh, wrong? No, I says they're part of the 5.039. Yeah, the, the allied services are um, the 5 million. Um, Where's the 5 million coming there? Bear with me for a moment, um, Deputy. Well, total um, 11.3. No, uh, I, I think the, the cost of the programme in total would be about 8.7 million. Oh, yeah. uh, there may be double counting, uh, oh, just sorry, in, in, in yeah, what yeah. you've um, yeah, just so, as, as you said, I just talked about okay, it. Yeah. Deputy, just, just, to put, just to correct, we've, we've got a summary. Um, the, the net voted expenditure for 2017 was 3.609 million. Um, and the net allied services expenditure, and uh, including the amount from the central fund, was 5.039 million, given an expenditure of 8.918 million, yeah. covering Gross. the net allied expenditure, the amount from the central fund, which includes um, salary and pensions of the president, and that particular allowance that has been referred to previously, yeah. and that the total is 8.918 for the yeah. year under review. Gross. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. Just like minutes, yeah. Well, okay, that clarifies it. Just to start, just for clarification, uh, the discretionary funding that we brought up before, uh, I was looking to see could I, last night and I going through this uh, presentation, I couldn't see 317,000 that discretionary fund. I just wondering why is it not in there? Um, uh, why, why is it not in the, uh, the Controller General General's report? It, it's actually in the figure, um, the charges to the central fund of the Exchequer. That includes the emoluments and allowances of the President. The figure in total is 894 million, and that includes the 317,000. Right. That's included there. Yeah, the reason why I'm asking this question is because, you know, it was controversial at the time, uh, mm -hmm. and just during the presidential election, and we're, we were all trying to get, or we're being told we shouldn't have been debated here because of the, the sensitivity of the election and that. But uh, I'm just wondering now that the election is over, we have a new president in place. I'd just like to know, for the public's sake, the 317,000 and the accountability for that, uh, for Adam and that uh, accumulated money that, which will come to big money over uh, five years, however, at least six or seven years, whatever it is. So I'm just wondering why is that there is not explained, and maybe Mr Fraser would like to add something to that, um, to explain to the public about that 317,000, and the explanations we have got for it. Just to appease the general public's mind. Well, no, but the first thing is I'm not the accounting officer for it, as, as I think the committee knows, but, uh, but I mean, I, 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 we, were here, we were here before, and this, as the, as the CNEG says, is included, I understand, in that central fund, so it's paid out of the central fund. I'll, I'll explain for the benefit of the public, because it does relate to um, the President's establishment. There is a payment of €894,000 from the central fund, and not through voted expenditure, through this vote, and it, it includes... Uh, allowances for the president and presidential pre pensions for former office holders and what's called the 1938 allowance that's paid by statutory instrument of 300 that includes the, that 894 includes the 317,000 so it's very important that is paid by the central fund by the Department of Finance and the Secretary General of the Department of Finance is the accounting officer for the Central Fund. Am I correct? In, he's the person responsible. And the Secretary General of the Department of Finance will be in shortly to deal with the finance vote. And we put him on notice. The Central Fund, which includes this payment, will ask the Secretary Can General of the Department of Finance will have to answer in respect to the Central Fund. Am I correct? Um, yeah, he's responsible for making the payment yeah. uh, to the President. Correct. 
and, we'll follow, and what happens after that will take up with that is separate. Separate. General. Is as separate to the, the 8.98 mill, is that money included in the 8.98 mill that we spoke about already? Or is that yes. extra? It, no, it's, it's included. included. It's included. It's included. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't find this. Uh, I know I'm not sure I'm like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not an person, but I couldn't yeah. find that in the system. Uh, and that just takes it to the public, like, you know. Mm. Okay. So it is in the 8.98 mill. Yeah. It is. Okay, yeah. I just want to talk about the audit committee, too, that came up during that debate we had before, too, that they didn't sit in 2017. I see since the Gusto Door chairman, we had, that was controversial at the time as well. Uh, has that been changed? Has the other committee now in place and has the chairman have been uh, appointed? And do they meet on a regular basis? They do. The chairman actually had been appointed in, in advance of our last discussion on this matter. Um, I, I, well, who is the chairman? Um, the chairman now is uh, the former Secretary General of the Department of Community, Rural and Gaelic Affairs, a uh, man called Joe Hamill. He, but he's in place since, since well before our last conversation. I think they had three or four meetings certainly three last year, so that, that, that structure is in place, and I, I think members of the committee understand what happened before that. They certainly explained the priority to the chairman. And this committee now is, does it meet regularly, and yeah. what's its role then? Well, it's, it wasn't, had no role in 2017, what's no, its role? No, it had a role, it just didn't meet because of the particularly uh, unfortunate circumstances surrounding the chair. Well, it Capacitated for a That's period. right, I remember so, it, yeah. so we understand that. So just to clarify, yeah. is it up and running now, and has it been, is it, yeah. is it meeting on a regular basis? Yeah. Or? It's met, as far as I know, it's met four times, it's certainly met three times last year and there's an audit programme and the audit is all proceeding. That was the case actually the last time we were here as well, but it wasn't the case previously, obviously. Okay, I move on to the other expenditure. Just the, the, the expenditures there. I see, um, I can understand the Garda Chicago 197, that would be secure as well, and Defence 488. Uh, the OPW 2.3 million, and Foreign Affairs and Trade 667 million. Can you explain what they are? The OPW first, uh, 2.3 million, and the Foreign Affairs and Trade 667,000. Um, well, again, I, I wouldn't be across the details, obviously, because I, I, I'm not responsible for the But I can understand the, the gap I mean, I can no, but it, security. In, in, in general, yeah, in general, sorry, no, bear, bear with me, Deputy, I'll just get the account. Um, sorry, I have it here. Somewhere. Sorry, you've got just the appropriation account, please. Have you had it? No, I have it. Sorry, Deputy, I had it here a second ago. I don't know this stuff as well as I know the teacher, so I have it here, sorry. So, the, the net highlight services, um, so the main, the main items there, so obviously uh, pensions is one of them. The biggest one, and I think CNG even mentioned this, is, is the OPW doing an awful lot of work. It's a, obviously the upkeep of the RS as a building itself and the grounds and all that. That's the, the main expenditure. A little bit on shared services, which every department has. Gary Shekana is, I think, security, foreign affairs and trade, then... There's obviously foreign travel and, and that's all for travel, is it? Well, I mean, state visits. It's not. It's not plane tickets. It's it's all the facilities that the Department of Foreign Affairs <laughs> provide to the president uh, at home and abroad. But, but generally speaking, abroad, uh, I think it says in the briefing you got where the president was in, in, uh, in 2017, which of course is a matter of public record. But I think it's uh, I think it's in the briefing somewhere. He was in. Uh, he did uh, state visits to Cuba. Australia and New Zealand. Australia and New Zealand was nearly a month long, I think, by the time he got back. And then he did an official visit to Colombia, an official visit to Peru, official visit to Italy and Vatican City, and an official visit to, to Scotland. So, uh, are they set money for that every year, or is it just a card? Is it set every year about the expenditure? Or no, can the, well, it all depends on when the president wants to go to well, when he's asked, uh, it's, it's, when he uh, wants to travel. wouldn't like to put, it, put it like that. It, it, it's, it's uh, I mean, it depends. It, obviously, the cost depends on where the president goes. Where the president goes is, is uh, obviously, his, his own personal wishes are, are, are important. But I mean, it's obviously a part of the, the diplomatic statecraft of the state. So I mean, if we, if, if countries offer a, a state visit or we offer a state visit to people, it's obviously based on whatever we think is, uh, is in our sort of national interests. Um, and where, where we want to sort of, I suppose, deepen friendships. I mean, the obvious one is the, is the president's visit to Britain a few years ago. And, so you see incoming and outcoming visits, it's, it's, it, it does depend. Obviously, the further away he goes, the longer he will be there and the bigger the cost yeah, of state visit. I think he was in Croatia and he was in, I was certainly he was in Greece last year. I mean, it wouldn't cost as much as going to Africa or Australia, New Zealand. So as you can see, it was a bit higher in 17 than in 16. But you're talking about, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of difference, depending on, on where he goes. Um, so that's the, that's the foreign affairs. Defence is, 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 is army services, I presume, yeah, they have soldiers that's, that's up there, self and the central fund. Um, I mean, just chairman, to be helpful, and I, I'm not the accounting officer, but I, 
you mentioned yourself, the President has published a document. I, I have no involvement in the preparation of that because, it's, as I said earlier on, it's not my quite properly none of my none of my business. But uh, he does set out in quite a lot of detail in that report um, what he does and the fact that he has 20,000 visits a year and 223 in-house events. Uh, and I think he's going to publish that annually. Yeah. I also understand he set up an audit committee for that uh, allowance and that he's um, refunded the surplus to the Exchequer. Yeah. But again, th these are not my responsibility, we just know that from my contacts. Would, would you know has that surplus been received? Yes. It has been received? Well, it was sent, so I hope it was received. Yeah. It was okay. electronic, right. unless it's on a bus uh, from... Electronic Paris. transfer, somewhere <laughs> coming. So it's been remitted anyway? I think so. You might even know that, Chair, has it? It's, it, was, it has, it, been, it has been remitted, yeah. yeah but you can understand good. why... We're asking these questions because yeah. the public in general, every, it's all but taxpayers' money. And the I do that, but as I said before, I'm in a particularly unique situation because I work with the Constitution all the time, so I'm just a bit sticky on these things. Yeah, well, it has to be right that the help. President himself has taken on, on, on board that he's going to provide the information. Exactly. That, uh, although there were some complaints that with the explanation that was provided that it wasn't detailed enough. Now, yeah. I didn't go there or, or, even, or even go into that, but it was that report and papers yeah. that it wasn't detailed enough. So, yeah. I mean, that's for well, someone else to say, not me. Anybody is entitled to criticise the President, it's yeah. just that he's not answered to your office. Okay, well, I just two quick questions. On, uh, uh, just talk about uh, procurement complaints there and one contract there of 37555. Uh, and it's, um, uh, it's always in compliance about this one. I just want to ask about that. What goods or services does this contract cover? This is on the President's. Yeah, and on, uh, yes, on board one, on page two there on our. It's uh, SIFC procurement complaints. Just a control on a general, with the exception of one contract, the value of 37,555. Why was that different than the procurement in general? So um, just, I'm, I see it there in front of me. I want to oh ask yeah. the question. Again, sorry, I'm not across the details. Um, Maybe I messed the wrong man. No, no. Well, no, no. Well, I have the answer. <laughs> um, so uh, what I'm told, uh, again, from the ORIS, is that there was difficulties with regard to mobile phone signals, so they only ever had one service provider for mobile phones, but they, they did do a mini framework uh, last month and they're going to award a contract in March, I'm told. So that's what that was, mobile phones. And is that, is that contract now going out for public procurement? That's, so I'm told it went to a, what they call an OGP mini framework, so yeah, procurement, yeah. Okay. And just last one then, uh, administration expenditure there, I see that it's 33% uh, uh, overestimate. Why is that? Um, I, I have literally no involvement in the, in, in, in the estimates for the president, but it, it's a 33 percent on a very small number. Um, it's yeah, but it's all rest of it. on admin. So, in other words, they save money. Um, over rest of it would be uh, save money to be overspent. No, I don't. Oh no, the other way. No, no. Oh yeah, it's your yeah. no, it's too much. Sorry, sorry, yeah, I talk around. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they saved money, but I'm glad they did. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't. I don't okay, we'll move on to vote two then. Uh, and I just want to hone in on the, on the cost of the government for nation service. And I want to speak about the strategic communication unit. Uh, I was trying to get uh, uh, an analysis there. This was set up by the government, and by the Chief's office, and by the government, and it was there for I don't know how long, and then it was disbanded. I just want to know a breakdown. What's the cost of? What was the cost of establishing? What personnel were involved? How many personnel were involved? And um, do you know the reason why it was dis disbanded then and moved back to we say normal circumstances of the community units uh, for the teacher? Because it's very much in the public eye as well, and very much spoken by the public in general. So I think there should be an explanation given to the public as to why it was originated and then why it was abandoned. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it was wound down on foot of a recommendation that I made, which we went through here at the last time. It was, uh, can, we, can, can you say, start to begin? When was it originated? And so, why was it, broadly, why speaking, was it broadly speaking, the, the story of the SCU is that it was established in 2017. I think it only spent something like 50 or 50,000 in 2017, it received an allocation of 5 million in 2018, and I think roughly eight extra staff went into the former GIS. How many, many extra staff was? Eight. Eight. Broadly and they speaking. were brought on for this? They were brought special. on to do this, yeah. And, um, and then there was the controversy. I, I did a report, which I think is from March of last year, which recommended winding it down. 
Uh, and why, why which we did, did you recommend it to be on? Um, well, it's a very long report, but broadly speaking, uh, I felt, first of all, it was taken away from our core priorities as the Department of the Taoiseach. We have a lot of reasonably important stuff to be doing, and this was really you now people were talking about nothing else. And secondly, I felt we were losing the trust of people who might uh, need to trust the civil service in the future. But well, why, 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 why was the trust lost? Uh, I mean, well, there must be a reason for that. Well, that's, what I, that's what I'm trying to get at. Why was it started? Why was it originated? Why was, the, uh, then being, why was it disbanded? And what's over, the reason for it? Being the over, reason why it well, they're the two reasons uh, for, for winding it down. Um, it's, like, it's not for me to say why members of the opposition uh, were unhappy with this, but the Dáil voted for it to disband Which I want. Hmm? Which I want. Exactly. So you must know better than me why you're unhappy with it. <laughs> you're unhappy with that one. <laughs> it's gone anyway. Yeah. Yeah, but the, that's not an explanation. You know, the no, but the explanation is, are the two reasons I gave you. Okay. Uh, I don't think so. The, Bobby. The aid staff. Yes, I was I think that's probably uh, true enough. The, the, the aid staff, the aid staff that were uh, implied, uh, what happened to that staff when went to so, I think we... We're, we, if we peaked this at like throwing teeth. Hmm? This is like throwing teeth. I can't get any no, information. No. <laughs> well, I was going. Well, anyway, um, they're, they're, the I think that the numbers there peaked at 20 or 21, and they're down at 16 now. So that's a sort of a 25 percent ish reduction in staff, um, and those people were redeployed. So would there any benefit at all with this proposal? Uh, well, I mean, was the teacher himself came up with this proposal originally and went with it, and. Uh, then it went wrong, and this is just layman's talk. It went wrong, and people didn't like it, and it, uh, uh, they got the kick in, and it got beaten, and then because of public opinion, it was withdrawn. I mean, is, is that a proper way of saying it? Um, I don't know public opinion, but it certainly uh, it got a kick in, and it was wound down. But I, I mean, I gave my reasons for recommending it. I recommended it be wound down, which is what I thought. And your your recommendation was taken on board. Yeah. Okay. That's as good as I'm going to get with that, are <laughs> I just want to know uh, here. I just imply employee numbers. The number of staff then in the 2017 was 228, compared to 204 then in 2016. I just uh, what was the reason for 20% uh, increase, 24 staff increase in 2017. That's a lot of staff increase in one yeah. year. Yeah. So um, I mean, our staff can fluctuate. Uh, quite a lot year on year. It's a small enough department, as you know. It's probably the smallest or second smallest. So we went up. Uh, the strategic communication was the main one. We, we had a couple of people on data protection, a couple of people on justice reform, a couple of people on um, internal records management and data protection, which would be the, the GDPR regulation and some of that stuff. Uh, we had someone on the North East Inner City Initiative, and then um, there was five people on various support services, HR, finance and private offices. So that's that's what the 14 were. Um, but it, the nature of the department is that we, we get extra work, we lose work. It's, it sort of moves around a lot. It's, it's, it's well, they permanent staff or, or, or just brought in on contract? They'd be, um, they'd be civil servants. Uh, so they'd be, generally speaking, permanent civil servants. Um, we bring a lot of people in as a convent from outside for a few years. Where we can sort of, we want to sort of draw on experience from other, other parts of the civil and public service. So, so we've, we've more than the, the average on people on secondment, but they'd all be public servants and generally they'd be civil servants. Um, but as I say, the work comes and goes. You know, in, in, in 2018, we had uh, we changed the Citizens Assembly, we had a reduction in staff and GIS, we did an increase on Brexit, we did an increase on justice, and we did an increase on commissions. So it, it moves around every but what's year. The, what's the present 2018, which is 17 and 16? What's 18 or, or 18, no, 18? The what's number the I have for 18 is 234. 234. Yeah. So it's still going up? Yeah. It's gone down and it's gone down in the past. It's gone up at the moment, yeah. Yeah, it's just fluctuating. Yeah. And is Brexit the cause of that? Not the main cause. Well, Brexit, we probably have more people on Brexit uh, in 18. The other, the other, well, we've, we've more commissions of inquiry and we... Um, we're also doing, doing some work on justice reform and reform of the Gardaí, so there's a couple of staff on that. Okay. Okay. But I have recommendations for us to do all sorts of other things in 2019, which we need even more staff. So This comes in phases. Sometimes we're told it's a massive empire that needs to be cut down in size, and then other times everyone comes saying, well, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. So, like, you know. But most of these people are civil servants, are they? They're still yeah. within the system, so yeah. you're getting them from somewhere else. Yeah. So they're all in the system. 
Okay, just redundancy in services there is increased from 47,000 in 16 to 414,000 in 17. Why, why the big increase? That was because we had a change of Taoiseach and a sort of a change of government. Certainly a change of Taoiseach. So a lot of the former Taoiseach staff would have got redundancy severance. Well, that's the reason why. Sorry? The former Taoiseach as well. I don't know that, no. genuinely. Um, I don't think so. Well, he's still a member of the doll. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry, yeah. flip and come. I don't think so. He, he certainly never thanked me for the, the for the check, but uh, I, I don't think so. But oh, sorry, deputy. I, I mean, if I'm wrong with that, I. Sorry. Do you, oh. No, I don't think so. Well, he's still a member of the doll, so he's still working away. He's not. He's sorry. He's uh, redundant. Okay, I, I, I apologise. I just didn't. Uh, okay. The last thing I want to ask you is just about public procurement. There, given the pay and travel subsistence system amounted to thirteen point one one million. Out of total administration spending of 15.3 million, 32 million, the value of non compliance procurement expenditure of 698,754 represents about a total, a total, non, total non pay expenditure of 2017. Can you explain that? These are the, this is the, con, the six contracts? It must be, yes, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, so, yes, yes, I was looking at the contracts here, yeah, yes. The, 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 the yes, biggest one, yeah, biggest one, one, two, three, four, you're right, yes, yeah, six yeah, contracts, yeah. yeah. The biggest one by far is a contract we have with the people who supply the electronic cabinet, the e-cabinet system, which was developed back in the mid-2000s. So it's proprietary software designed by one company. They're the only company who can effectively work on it. So uh, that's, that's most of it. There's a couple of telephonists from AIR who uh, are sort of with us a long time. AIR just provide the switchboard in government buildings. Uh, newspapers, uh, which I think we tend to for since, but it's very hard to get value on newspapers because they cost the same wherever you buy them. So we buy them in a news agent in um, Leeson Street, I think. Uh, but we've tendered for that. Um, and then the Moriarty Tribunal had uh, a company doing, I think, transcription Secretarial or Secretarial Services. So obviously not not decided by us. Uh, and I think the Cregan Commission employed uh, an office equipment uh, and the Moriarty Tribunal had another company doing something. I don't know what they were doing. But anyway, so there's two tribunals and a commission who, who uh, did that. And obviously we have to get them doing Just to ask question, just to capital uh, disposal of capital assets, that IT equipment, uh, why do you dispose of it in Hobo? And who would be interested by it? That uh, uh, IT equipment that's got out of date or what? Just as just, just see it there, it's uh, 321,000. Yeah, the lifespan of, of computer equipment. No, it has a it has a write down every year. It's, 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 it's and you sell that off? Where do you sell that off to? Your disposal? Does that mean you sell it? But, but they, they go to a recycling. Oh, yeah. just oh yeah, it's recycled. Just, just yeah. It, yeah. It's recycled in there. Yeah. Uh, and how did three hundred twenty-one thousand come out then? Realise three hundred twenty-one thousand. No, I, I think the um, the original cost of them was three three hundred and twenty one thousand, but they'd actually been depreciated. Oh, yeah. So, uh, from a net book value uh, point of view, it was very small. It was oh, yeah. About fourteen thousand. Okay, I think uh, the controller has given me a clear bill, bill ahead, so I don't think I have anything else to say to you. So I can't find any loopholes here, so you're free. <laughs> <laughs>